I was waiting for a while for this game. The lack of announcement date drove me crazy. Shredder's Revenge went for most of its development time without a release date. When it was finally revealed to come out on the 16th of June, I was satisfied. It was a decently long wait and I can hardly recall the last time I got excited for anything game related. The enthusiasm wasn't for nothing. The game, despite not being the most amazing thing I've played in my life, gave me quite the experience. It harkens back to the days of couch co-op where you would play with friends during a late afternoon. You would play while eating or you'd be eager to go back to playing after dinner. I'm not quite the emotional person but I want to point out why such games create such feelings for me. I do want to say that I prefer Streets of Rage 4 but this game was fun and was an improvement over the original and the arcade version or at least close to it. Shadow's Revenge is a simple, short beat-em-up that offers a wide variety of characters. Each one possesses regular attacks, throws, and supers. It's short, you can end it in a couple of hours, about 6 or 7, but it's time well spent, especially in multiplayer. It's not complicated, but that's what we need. There's a certain depth to it, but it doesn't go off the deep end like Sweets 4 with the combo cancels, wall bounces, and Tekken level bound combos. An effective experience that reunites people and doesn't divide them with politics, and doesn't overstay its welcome with open world DLC crafting mess. One thing that's far from being messy is the art style. It's more on the cute side and may not be to everyone's taste, but it's well done. The fluidity is amazing, it's colorful, there is a couple of obvious references, but more importantly it's full of personality. From the playable characters to the Foot Clan goons. Speaking of them, they're all doing something in the levels. Playing, eating, typing, each level has a team and they adapt to that, and it's quite funny. In the department of actually playing the fucking game, the title is quite amazing. Like mentioned above, it's good but not the best beat em up I played. What creates that issue for me is the lack of differences between the characters. Every character can attack, charge attack, jump, grab, perform a special attack in the air and on the ground. They can also enter radical mode, which makes them more powerful. They all have beautifully varied animations, but little to no changes in the properties of the actual moves. Characters feel more or less the same outside of speed, power, and combo potential. I did not expect this game to turn into a hack and slash like Streets 4 did, but character feel is something that game nailed and that's consistent within the genre. There's also a serious issue with the lack of invincibility frames during and after certain attacks, which is one of the core tenets of games and even more so for that genre. Enemies can overwhelm you, so you compensate with that. It's egregious enough that it makes the grab moves useless. You can easily get hit during the animation, it's too risky to bother. Fortunately the rest of the experience is very smooth and there are some changes that set it apart from the rest of the style. I really like that the super bar is raised by attacking and taunting, giving you a risk versus reward factor, especially in regards to the taunt. Usually the super is that thing that you use in desperation. Also, this game must be played in a group. It's very fun alone, but it takes all its meaning with other people. It's chaotic, but in a fun way. Sometimes, however, there's issues with the matchmaking. Not too much, but there's been problems. Characters disappearing, levels taking a long time to end, being booted to the main screen. Speaking of the main screen, can we change characters there? It's annoying having to go back to the character selection every time. In the music and sound department, things are looking good. Most of the obvious actors return to provide their voices, save for the obvious exclusions, like James Avery. Rest in peace, Uncle Phil. It's an extra touch to make you feel at home. In terms of soundtrack, the sound is right out of the beat em up era. The team of the Turtles makes an appearance, but what's more interesting is the inclusion of Ghostface Killer. When you think about it, TMNT is no stranger to rap.
Also, don't mind the recent comments of Rob Paulson about issues he clearly doesn't understand. The only thing that let me down, outside of Rob Paulson, is the story. Yes, I know, why I care about the story in a beat em up. Well, I didn't expect any groundbreaking storytelling, but yet again I must reference Streets of Rage 4. The story at least moved forward, even though it was all about fighting the kids of Mr. X, which was pretty derivative, there was something new. This game simply retreads the plot from the last one, getting back the Statue of Liberty again. I don't need the Turtles to be 20 years in the future, this isn't Last Ronin, although a game of that would be fun. I just don't want the Star Fox effect to take place and to always have to fight Andros. Speaking of which, can we deplore the lack of Shredder in a game called Shredder's Revenge? He's barely in it and he gets a cool rap song like he actually did shit, but Krang was running the show. Jokes aside, Shredder's Revenge is a good product. It's just a game. It doesn't try to say anything, it's not full of microtransactions, it's just a fun time with friends. If you have any. I'm a big proponent of turtle power and this is a good example of why.